Now we're ready to apply Castiglianos theorem to curved beams. And in this particular case, we're taking a look at figure 412 out of the Shigley textbook. And what we have to do in order to find the strain energies is we have to look at how the loading state varies as we move along at angle theta. And so if we are to take a cut at any angle theta, then we come over here, we're gonna notice a couple of things. What we are doing is we're moving the force which we had acting at the centroid up to the centroid here. In order to do that, we add and subtract the same force, and that's going to give us a force and a moment. So we retain the force F and we have a moment. The moment arm is just r sine theta. We multiply that by f, and that gives us our first look at a moment. Now, the other thing, we're going to zoom in a little bit more. We have this force f that we say is acting, and it has a moment that's also acting, and the moment is f r sine theta. But we want to resolve that force component into an f theta and an f r. The f r is going to be a shear and the f theta is going to be an axial. So we have a number of things acting here. In order for us to do a full accounting using Castiglianos theorem, we need to determine the bending energy, the tensile energy, and we need to determine the shear energy. So we are going to have to integrate functional forms along the entire length of the beam. We go back and look at this force diagram where we have the moment and the force, and we want to resolve that force into shear and axial components. We need to take notice of something, and that is our angle theta is measured here, which makes this the angle theta, which makes this 90 minus theta which makes this theta. So we find that fr is going to be f cosine theta, and f theta is going to be f sine theta. So we have nice expressions for the radial and axial loads, and we have a nice expression for the moment as well. And we know that all of the energy terms are associated with the square of the loading state and integrated over the volume. So if we go back and look at the bending stress, it it turns out that we have this bending stress is going to be integrated with respect to theta. It is m squared over 2aEE -E d theta, where e is the eccentricity, which is the difference between the neutral and the centroidal axis. So it's r centroidal minus r neutral. A is the cross-sectional area of the beam, and capital E is the elastic modulus. The tensile component is going to be associated with theta, and it's simply f theta squared divided by 2AE, but we're integrating that along the arc length R d theta. The shear component is integrated over theta. It's going to be this constant that corrects for the cross-sectional area. We multiply that by FR squared. We divide that by twice AG integrated over R d theta. So these are the energy terms that we care about and that we have to keep in mind, but there is something that we need to do up here on the moment. And the reason we need to to fix the moment is you may or may not recall that in a curved beam in bending, the neutral axis migrates inward away from the centroidal axis by a distance e. And so if it is in positive moment, we end up with tensile forces on the bottom side that run through zero at the neutral axis and become compressive forces on the top side of that beam. Now we moved the force to the G geometric centroid of the cross section, and that force is F theta, I've written it twice for some reason. Now what we have to do is we got to move that force F theta to the neutral axis so that we can combine the bending stresses from F theta and the moment that we calculated earlier. The moment that we calculated earlier was just equal to F r sine theta. So now what we have to do is we have to add to that a moment, and in our case this was positive, we have to add Add to that a moment that's generated by F theta. So the total moment is going to be F R sine theta. And now this F theta, when I move it to the neutral axis, it 
it has a moment arm which is equal to E, the eccentricity, and it's now rotating to try to decrease the radius of curvature. So it has an opposite sign. It's going to be F theta times E. That is my net overall total bending moment for curve beam in bending. That is the distinct difference between curved beams in bending and straight beams. When you go to Castiglione's theorem, you have to correct the moment. Right, now recall that the bending energy is going to be the integral along the length, m squared over twice the cross-sectional area, the eccentricity, the elastic modulus, along the arc length, d theta. Now what we need to do is we need to understand that we got to replace that moment with the total moment squared. So this total moment squared is just going to be F squared R squared sine squared theta plus F theta squared E squared minus twice F R sine theta F theta E. That's our entire total moment squared. E is a small number, so we are going to ignore this term. And we're just going to rewrite this a bit and take note of the fact that the M as we normally define it, the M is just F R sine theta. That's the, that's the moment we generally think of when we transfer the force to the centroid. So we're going to say that this total moment squared is just m squared minus twice f theta e m. Now what we do is we put that up into the integral up above, and we find that the bending energy is the integral of m squared over twice a little e times capital E d theta, and we have to subtract from that the integral of f theta m over a capital E integrated along the length d theta. It's simplified because we were able to cancel E and 2 in the denominator. So we had this 2 f theta e m, and in the denominator we had 2 a little e capital E. And so this is the expression that we get for the bending stress. So it is worth summarizing what the total stored elastic energy happens to be. We have the integral along the length of the beam of the m squared over twice a eccentricity elastic modulus, where m is just this f r sine theta term. We have this term here, which is the axial tensile load, we are going to have to subtract from that our F theta M over A elastic modulus D theta, and we are going to have to add to that our FR squared over 2AG R D theta. So this is the total stored elastic energy that includes all of the terms for a beam in bending. And I did forget something. I forgot this correction factor C in the transverse shear term. So don't forget about that correction factor. If we want to calculate the deflection, then we su simply take the partial derivative of that total energy with respect to a force of interest. And we what we get is M times partial of M with respect to F over a E elastic modulus integrated with respect to theta. I'm going to put brackets around that partial. We have to add to that the integral along the tire length of the beam of F theta R times the partial of F theta with respect to F over A E integrated with respect to theta. We are going to have to subtract from that the integral of 1 over A E times the partial of F theta M with respect respect to F integrated along the length d theta, and we are going to have to add to that the integral of C F R R over A G partial of F R with respect to F integrated with respect to d theta. So that gives us the deflection equation for a curved beam in bending that accounts for all of the energies.